Welcome to the Prayer Link, everyone. I'm Wendy Griffith. And I am Charlene Aaron. And it is so great to be with my co-host and my friend. Good to be with you. And we're feeling like spring here on the set. We are. The blue, the, the pink. pink. It's spring. It's, it's in June. the air. It's it, June. Yes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, let's get right into our Praying the News segment where we highlight and pray about the stories affecting our world. Well, June, you've probably heard, is Pride Month for those in the LGBTQ community and Target is in the crosshairs. The retailer is pulling products off the shelves after a nationwide pushback over a line of products for the gay and transgender communities. The company's stock dropped significantly in market value since it kicked off this campaign. That's right, Wendy. And some of the items featured slogans like live, laugh, lesbian, and clothing for babies and children. So how should Christians respond in a culture that celebrates this lifestyle? From an Adidas ad showcasing a biological male wearing a women's swimsuit, to Target's items featuring slogans like Live Laugh Lesbian and clothing for babies and children, the marketing of Pride products abound. I was shopping at Target yesterday and this is what I seen. People always say, don't push your agenda on people, don't push your beliefs on people. But this ain't pushing your belief on people. They will say, this is just for the adults. This is baby clothes, kids clothes, this agenda is for everybody. Wake up. Former gay Hollywood set and fashion designer Beckett Cook, now a devout Christian, calls the widespread approval of LGBTQ ideology part of an overall activist strategy. He singles out this book, After the Ball, How America Will Conquer Its Fear and Hatred of Gays in the 90s as Proof of the Gay Agenda to Undermine Christianity and Traditional American Family Values. We're inundated with TV shows, movies, uh, media, social media. The 90s was really the decade that it really took off with Will and Grace, with Sex and the City had gay characters in it. After decades of that happening and, and being inundated with that, th it's no wonder that the culture is completely, it's been completely normalized in the culture. Many are pushing back against that normalization. Thousands are now boycotting Target, forcing the chain to remove some Pride merchandise from store shelves, and in some locations, moving displays from the front of stores to the back. In a statement Tuesday, the company cited safety concerns, saying, since introducing this year's collection, we've experienced threats impacting our team members' sense of safety and well-being while at work. Given these volatile circumstances, we are making adjustments to our plans, including removing items that have been at the center of the most significant confrontational behavior. Minister Nicole Collins lived as a lesbian for 20 years. She says in a culture that embraces LGBTQ ideals, Christians can make a difference. Today, she runs a Christian clothing line featuring the rainbow. The Lord literally showed me a vision and I saw a hand clutching the rainbow in the clouds and I saw the words and scripted, take back the rainbow. As the battle over this and other issues continue, many stress that violence is never the answer and should be condemned. Collins encourages believers instead pray for the LGBTQ community. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He died for the homosexual, he died for the transgender, but that's why we need to be born again. Amen. And so I think that the church just needs to be that pillar. Uh, we've got to show love without compromising. Pride Cook agrees. Else, Every day during Pride Month, we should all as Christians be praying mm. for people to get saved out of that life, just like mm. God did with me. Well, wow, we are going to pray about that. And I love that line, take back the rainbow. Amen. Uh, but first, want to talk about what happened in India. The death toll stands now at 275 with hundreds more injured. This after a three train crash Friday in India. Look at this. It's one of the worst rail disasters in that country's history. India officials believe the crash was caused by an error in the electronic signaling system. Wow. You Wendy. know, and that is just a shame for all of those families that are so affected. Devastation, Wendy. I mean, I, I mean, can't imagine. Yeah, you know, almost 300 people almost dead. Almost 300. I, I heard it was something like 900 injured. Yeah, 900 people injured, Wendy. Yeah. I can't imagine. 
well, you know, that was a powerful story. Thank yes. you for, for covering that yeah. because, I, and I'm so glad uh, you got you talked to the lady yes. who said, let's take, take back, back the back rainbow the ra because that really it's resonates. God. It's it God's not rainbow. The LGBT communities, it's God's. And we're yeah. going to pray. Yeah, let's pray. We're going right to pray now. right now. Father, yeah. we just thank you right now, Lord God, um, that you are in control and you love members of the LGBTQ community. Yes, you do, you Lord. died for them, Lord Jesus, yes, you and you want to reach them with your love. And Lord, just like Nicole said, you want us to take back the rainbow because it mm -hmm. belongs to you, Lord God. And so, Lord, I pray right now that believers all over this nation, all over the world would stand up in love without compromise and stand up for what's right, Lord God, but also show the love of Jesus Christ and pray for the LGBTQ community yes, because Lord. you died for them, Lord Jesus. You saved them. You saved um, Nicole and you're saving so many others. You saved us, Lord God, from a life of sin. Mm -hmm. So we ask that you would do a mighty work in the lives of the LGBTQ community in the month of June in Jesus' name. And Lord, also Jesus. we lift up these dear people in India, yes. these families that are devastated right mm -hmm. now. Father, only you can comfort them. Lord, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit, send your love, send the uh, provision they need, the help they need, but mostly give them uh, your comfort, your peace. Lord, let, yes. that they would know that you are still with them. Lord, this is a devastating uh, tragedy that's happened in India. But Lord, even this, you can bring good out of it out of. So right now we just pray for these dear people, Lord, that you would help them and bless them out of this tra tra tragedy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, still ahead, a conversation with Dr. Jackie Green about her new book, Permission to Live Free, Living the Life God Created for You. Stay with us. Dr. Jackie Green is a wife, mother, pastor, dentist, and author. Her latest book is called Permission to Live Free, Living the Life God Created for You. She recently sat down with Ephraim Graham to talk about the book and her life. He called us fearfully and wonderfully made. We are masterpieces of the Most High God. And if he calls us good, who are we to say anything else? Who are we? to say anything about the master of the universe creating what he desired. Why would we doubt? Why would we misstep? Why would we hesitate to step up and take our rightful places of owning a life of permission? I hear you talk a lot about permission, uh, whether it's weekly, online. Yes. Why permission? What made you feel you needed that? What, what, ha what happened? I believe that so often we live in a world where we're always searching. We're looking for validation. We're looking for someone to affirm. What I found is as I began to build my relationship with God and began to receive a love that was like nothing else, it began to give me and equip me with the strength to grab a hold of something that I didn't have, which was a boldness to not just know a thing, but to live a thing out. So many of us are living, but we're not living the way God intended us to live because we are handing over a thing that God gave us from original intent, which was dominion and authority. His righteous DNA lives on the inside of us. And I think that when we can tap into that, I believe that we own a life that is so free, so fun, um, so not pretend, uh, where we're actually able to be honest and we're able to bless people by right of freely being who God made us to be from the beginning. And that for me is what permission was all about, me being precisely and fully who God made me to be. There's something you said in that that struck me and it was in a message you were, were preaching mm -hmm. and you may not even thought about it, but I had, it stopped me in my tracks. It was like, God has given you power over hell, and I was like, huh, mm. what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that our authority? He says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. That's the same power that was in Jesus that allowed him to go to death hell and the grave to lead captivity captive. And he says that, yes, I'm gonna ascend, but I'm not gonna leave you without a gift. He came in flesh to dwell among us for us to know that we don't have to live defeated or we don't have to live shine back from who God made us to be. And so, yes, we have the ability to speak a name and at that name, demons and darkness backs up because of the name that we call on. You sit here so perfectly manicured, <laughs> speaking in authority, uh, and then to hear you say you didn't have the boldness to man, live free. Man, man, 
I know the God that has equipped me to find myself in rhythm with him and in pace with him where I can live and move and have interviews and have my being with him. And he will fill my mouth just as he did with the, the disciples of the early church, the apostles of the early church. They said that they were ordinary men, but somehow they were saying things that were extraordinary. I believe the same truth is for every ordinary person watching this, this segment that maybe you are just going into a classroom to teach or you're showing up to be a good wife to your husband or your or a good husband to your wife, that God can meet you in all these ordinary things and do extraordinary things through you simply because you don't hold back your natural nature and you allow the grace that is so sufficient, the grace and the supernatural power of God to meet you in the natural and allow supernatural things to be birthed. That's what I feel that people see now. It's not anything that I have of my own. It's by right of me plugging into something that is so much greater than me. Mm, beautiful. So now we're looking at this book now, but you actually wrote this book some time ago because I was looking, I was like, I, is this the second book or is this the, the, the yes. <laughs> when did you initially sit down to do this? So we actually wrote the book. I wrote the book in 2018 and I released it self-published in January 2019. We were so excited. The Lord was just pressing on me that women needed to hear my voice and women needed someone to show them an example of freedom. And so I stepped out there in obedience to do the thing. I released it, but it was really just an act of faith because I didn't have time to promote it. We didn't have, I mean, we were also in very early stages of our ministry as a church. And so I didn't have the ability to give what I would have wanted to give behind it. But what I did give was enough. And that's what I want people that are watching this today to understand that there are times that you might give this small thing that you might feel is so insignificant and there's no way it's going to make its mark on the earth. And God is saying, but you gave me obedience. And I tell people this, that inside of obedience, I believe everything that you need is found. I believe that the favor that you need, the, the, the person that needs to make the book deal, I actually gave this book and somehow it landed in the hands of a literary agent that I never had met, that I didn't know anything about. And she was so convicted by the message of permission. She was saying, I have to get this in the hand of a national publisher. And she did just that. It goes from this thing that I just released in faith to the Lord saying, God, I believe that you'll bless this small thing break it and multiply it and that you'll bring forth of harvest and what we're sitting inside of as we release this book now um, nationally released um, by Thomas Nelson is the harvest of what he releases on the other side of giving the seed of obedience because it does multiply. I love her spirit, Charlene. I love her. She's great. I could listen to her all day. Well, Me too. Dr. Jackie's book, Permission to Live Free, Living the Life God Created for You, is available for you whenever you want to get it. <laughs> or, That's right. Uh, just go to wherever books are sold, or you can download it um, on your reading material. Awesome. Well, in love with meth, he would rip off his own parents to get high. Stay tuned to see how a free gift helped him break a 30-year cycle of addiction. Plus, we'll be praying for you right after this. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to The Prayer Link. Jeff Tomlinson first tried drugs when he was 12 years old. That first hit led to nearly 30 years of addiction. Amazing. And he spent the next few decades living on and off the streets and in and out of prison. Jeff was living with no hope and feeling as if he had no way out. I was really greedy. I, I didn't care about anybody. I, I just cared about having more drugs. I didn't even care about the money. I just wanted more meth. Jeff Tomlinson spent most of his life involved with drugs and crime. When he was young, he had his mind made up about religion. When I was a child, I thought people that believed in God were kind of foolish. I thought it was a lot of nonsense. I, I never went to church as a, a child. My parents never took me to a church. I did have friends that went to church, and I just thought that they were kind of weird. When he was 12, he took a job with an older neighbor. The attention made him feel good, and so did the drugs they took together. He was in his 30s, and uh, he owned a, a boat shop and he was just a partier, and it gave me easy access to uh, a lot of drugs. I started freebasing cocaine when I was 12 years old, and from that, I started doing methamphetamine, and I, I got addicted. You know, I think it was just curiosity. I mean, my home life wasn't all that bad. I, I wasn't really trying to escape, but for the most part, I, I just wanted to have fun. Jeff's drug use propelled him into a 30-year addiction, a life of violence, crime, and incarceration followed. I got in trouble 
when I was 16, I, I got in trouble with my friends. We were on LSD, and uh, my friends beat up a uh, disabled veteran and beat him up real bad, and the sheriffs came up and arrested us. Because he was still a juvenile, Jeff often only received probation. The judge looked at me in front of my parents and said, guarantee you'll be in prison by the time you're 21. Jeff knew he needed to change. I wanted to get away from the drugs, but they were so enticing that I just kept going back. I went to the uh, army recruiter, and the army recruiter was from my neighborhood. And he, he said, you know what, I think we could help you out. And uh, he gave me a way into the military. The army structure and discipline helped Jeff stay clean for a season. However, an injury put Jeff right back on the addiction roller coaster. I almost lost my leg. Uh, I had knee surgery, and then it got infected. They gave me a, a narcotic at the time called Tylox, and I was addicted to that. Once out of the service, Jeff quickly went back to his old addictions. Something in me j just made me realize that I really didn't want to do anything in life except party. I got a little bit of money from the military when I got out. It wasn't that much. It was like $10,000 severance pay, and I put it all into partying. I hate to say it, but I was in love with meth. Jeff continued to sell meth, all the while spiraling deeper into a life void of purpose. In that world of meth, everybody is lying, everybody is cheating each other, and, and I was able to do it pretty good. I, I created a lot of enemies. I've had people point guns at me, I've had people threaten to shoot me, and I dared them. I take me out of my misery, I was tired of living anyway. I didn't have any aspect, really, of there being a God or, or even caring if there was a God. Jeff also fathered a child with his girlfriend. Several arrests followed for selling and possession. During one stint in prison, an inmate told him about Jesus. And I sat next to him every day for about a year and a half, and he would tell me about Jesus every day. And I would tell him, and he would read proverbs and things like that, and it just sounded like riddles to me. And I'd tell him, man, I don't want to hear about your riddles or your fantasy world. But the seeds of faith had been planted. When Jeff was released, however, he began living on the streets. When I was homeless and I was denied food stamps, and I, I didn't believe in God. I, I couldn't rasp my head around it. I couldn't really grasp why is everything so bad right now. I went to the VA and uh, I got help. I finally got some help. A gift from his mother, who was not even a Christian at the time, brought a glimmer of hope to his life. She gave me a Gideon's Bible, a little orange Gideon Bible, and I started reading it. I came up to Psalm 40. I came to a verse, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. And it talks about how God has taken you up out of the, the muck and the mire, out of the horrible pit. And my life was just horrible at this time. And I was like, man, this is it. This is real. God is real, and he has a plan for my life. I realized 100% Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. He's given me a chance at life. Jeff got sober during treatment. He later reconciled with his parents and led them both to Christ. I was willing to rob my own parents. I was willing to rip anybody off to get this drug, methamphetamine. I mean, in the beginning, it seems like fun, but uh, in the end, it's nothing but destruction. In 2015, he met and married Patricia and was also able to get custody of his son. He's pursuing his master's in counseling and his once purposeless life now has meaning. I still want to make a difference in life. I, I want to help others as a social worker because when I do meet Jesus Christ, I, I want to be able to say, hey, look, you've been so good to me. My life has changed so much. Sometimes I, I do focus on all the wrong, but I, I also know that God has forgiven me and he doesn't see the wrong no more. It doesn't matter what you've done on earth. If you accept Jesus Christ as your savior, you are forgiven. And it doesn't matter what you've done. If he forgave me, he could forgive anybody. Wow, that's so incredible. Powerful. I just love the, his spirit and yes. you know, his life is so great now. And Look you know, what Jesus did. <laughs> and it just reminds me, Charlene, that you know, sometimes we think we're too far gone. Yeah. God can't help me. He can't rescue me now yeah. because I, I am just, I'm, I've done too much. Mm -hmm. I've gone too far. But you know what? God never gives up on us. No. We give up on ourselves that's sometimes. Right. He but, said he didn't believe in God, but God yeah, believed in him. And he did. God had a plan for him before he even knew who God yes. was, Wendy. And, and right now, I believe there's someone watching. Yeah. And you think you're just too far gone. You're too into your addiction. You think there's mm -hmm. no hope. 
But there is hope today, and his name is Jesus. Jesus. His name, look, it happened for Jeff. Yes. He was living on the streets. He thought he was, he wanted to die, but God reached in and pulled him out of the mm -hmm. muck and the mire. Yes. And we'll do that for you today too. Yes. You know, just, just lift up your hands. Lord, we just, we love you, Jesus. Thank Lord, you, we just Jesus. thank you, God, that you rescue us. Yes. Lord, you rescue us, Lord, when we are at our lowest. Yes. Lord, you come and, and, and Lord, you're just, you're always going to rescue us. You're, you're not giving up on us, even if we've given up on ourselves. So God, today, for that person watching who needs you to pull them up out yes. of that muck and mire, out of that addiction, whatever they're going through, Lord, out of that pain, Lord, we ask for you to do it right now yes. in Jesus' name yes. and give them that new life. Give them that, that hope that comes from knowing you and following you in Jesus' name. And Lord, your word says that whosoever shall call Jesus. upon the name of the Lord shall, shall be, be saved. saved, shall be delivered. So Lord, as people are Jesus. calling on your name, Jesus, and Lord Jesus, help me, God. All you can say is, God, help me. That's all the prayer you had. God, help me. Lord, I thank you that you're delivering them right yes, now. Right you're now. setting captives free right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Up next, we're bringing you the word of the week with our friend, Doug Addison. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. And before we go, here's the word of the week from Doug Addison. Doug Addison here. You know, the Lord is doing a deep work of healing. He's preparing us right now for what's ahead. He's restoring our hope. Psalm 33, 18 is a key verse. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him and those whose hope is in his unfailing love. So the Lord is watching over us right now. He's removing the things that are holding us back from getting our breakthrough. He's also restoring his unfailing love and his hope towards us. The key right now is to wait on the Lord, stay in hope. Also, we repent, renounce, and break anything we have in common, and there would anything that would cause us to not be able to get this breakthrough in our lives. We ask that the true Jesus would move right now. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Doug. Amen. Great word. Well, that's it for this edition of The Prayer Link. And remember, next time you can watch us on Instagram. That's at The Prayer Link on Instagram. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, prayer, prayer works. works.